The forecast says it's going to be a nice clear blue sky sort of a day and if we're lucky we might have some little sheepy white clouds floating by. The sun hasn't quite come up yet so it's an early start. Autumn is on the way and it's cold and that is why I am getting well and truly rugged up but I think it's going to be a very pretty little ride across to somewhere where there's lots of colour and I think a polarising filter could come in super handy. <laughs> You've just got to love the sound of a motorcycle going through a tunnel, haven't you? It really is a beautiful morning, isn't it? The sun's just sneaking over the horizon. Why am I not photographing the sunrise? Because I've got another idea and I want to stick to the idea that I've already got. As light travels through the atmosphere, droplets of moisture, clouds, all that stuff, break those rays of light up and scatter them so they're traveling in different directions. A polarizing filter gathers up those rays of light and brings them all together so they're traveling in straight lines. This removes glare, it saturates color, but polarizing filters will remove one and a half to two stops of light and we don't want that to happen because it will slow down your shutter speed potentially causing camera shake and that's blurry pictures. So only use a polarizing filter when you need to. Just now I had to stop and change the batteries in a GoPro. They don't like this cold weather. <laughs> and it's panage time of year. That means in the autumn, they let the pigs out onto the forest to eat the acorns. It's just brilliant. Pigs running around everywhere. There's a couple of curious porkers running around near me. I'm not paying attention because look at that. Isn't it beautiful? This is one of my favorite locations down here. We come here on my motorcycle tour for photographers, a photo biker workshop. And I'm hoping we can use the polarizing filter, <coughs> excuse me, to bring out a little bit of this sky, these clouds. <laughs> this is just awesome. It really is chilly this morning and I am internally grateful for my bearing jacket and trousers and my Rucker Down X2 under jacket because I'm warm as toast. Look at this gorgeous calm water. We've got this sky, these mackerel clouds, and we've got the old keeper's cottage. I just love this place, it's just gorgeous. I didn't expect there to be quite so much cloud, to be honest with you, but I'm still pretty sure we can bring this to life a little more with a polarizer, but we've got to use it at the right angle, and I am pretty sure I know where we can do that. Looks great, doesn't it? Now, this is an angle I love shooting this house from, but a polarizer will make no difference. Here is a great little composition. Looking at this place, sort of from here, I like the steps going down there, but we're going straight into the light, and of course, this video camera can't handle it. As I start to darken the exposure, we're bringing that back. You could work this as a raw file and bring it together, but I promise you, the polarizer will make no difference. The sun is gonna peak because it is a very, very, very bright sky. Now, let's just take that shot. Now, it's not a bad shot and it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Pop the polarizer on. I'm using a circular polarizer. So we're just gonna screw it onto the front of the lens, like so, and have a look and see if that polarizer makes any difference. It won't, I promise you. So I've got my polarizer on. Let's bring the exposure back up so you can see a little bit more of what's going on. Now, you rotate the polarizer to bring in the effect, I'm rotating the front of the polarizer and absolutely nothing at all is happening to the shot. Let's brighten it up a little more for you. Try again. 
Look, it is making absolutely no difference as I turn the polarizer. And that is because the light's coming straight towards it. We need the light going across it. I'm turning this direction and I start rotating it. Look what's happening up there in the sky. We're getting a different effect. And so no matter how much you love this composition and this angle, the polarizer will not help you in any way. Let's just move up the lane a bit because there is another set of steps over there. I don't like this angle on this place as much because of the windows. Those windows on the other side just look so much nicer. And of course, I love shooting directly into the light. But let's take a look. So here's our little house sitting there. We have actually got a really nice blue sky going on up there. We've got some nice clouds. I'm gonna take a quick shot, just so we can do a comparison. I like these steps just running down in front of me, line that up. I do like that sky coming in from the top left corner of the frame. So here's our shot, and we've got a good, strong blue sky regardless. So what difference will the polarizer make? Remember when we looked from the other side, absolutely no difference whatsoever. So we screwed the polarizer on, Immediately we have lost a load of light. Look how dark that exposure looks. This is why you should never leave your polarizer on. So I'm going to adjust exposure just to get the shot a bit brighter. Somewhere around there I think is pretty good. I'm just a sneeze over what the camera wants. Right now the polarizer is set so that it isn't doing anything. But as we rotate it, watch the sky in the top right corner. Look at that starting to darken down. Look at the sky. Sky. Look at the clouds starting to pop. That looks okay, but there's something you must always bear in mind with a polarizer and this sort of shot, and that is, does it look natural or does it look overdone? It's very easy to get a bit carried away with a polarizer. I'm gonna take a still and then we can compare some stuff. It will look dramatic, don't get me wrong. It will look very dramatic and very punchy. It's going to increase the contrast and everything. So 500 of the second F7. I don't know why I'm on 400 ISO, but I am. It will be fine. Lots of that sky. We have got a very, very dark blue sky going on there, and it does look dramatic, but I think it's a little overdone. So let's see if we can just take that effect down a bit. So First of all, let's do a control shot. Here we go, there is no effect from polarizer like that. And then I'm just gonna look at the one I just did, which is very strong and dark indeed. Now let's take a shot somewhere in between the two. So we have certainly strengthened the colors quite a lot. So here's the over dark one. Here's the one with no effect at all. And here's the one which is subtle. Let's compare the super dark and the more subtle one. It's of course a creative choice for you. How much do you want to use that polarizer? In what way do you want to use the polarizer? Now polarizers will also take glare off water. Let's see if I can find an example of that. Yes, I know, I said that a polarizing filter won't make any difference when you're going into the sun. And that is basically true, but it can make some subtle differences. And I want to see if we can do something with the glare on the water over there, because the shot from the other side of this place is just, well, I'm sorry, boring. When we look at this side of the cottage, not only we've got the windows, we've also got that amazing sky. Backlighting your subject, bringing the light towards the camera always looks more interesting. And there are techniques which will allow you to still capture it. When I look at this with my eyes, that sky is incredibly bright and most of it is burnt out. How the GoPro captures what it does, I just think is a miracle because when I look at it through my little Fuji camera here, it is a lot, lot, lot more contrasty. Here is the shot. We've got some detail in the sky here, but of course the, the sun is very, very burnt out and all the shadows on this side are super black. That is with the exposure set one stop above what the camera wants it to be. If I go where the camera wants it, it gets even darker and more contrasty. I think a nasty little boat with an engine has gone past and created 
some waves, some ripples in the water. Where's it gone? Ah, oh, it's out over there. You can't see it from where you are. So how could we do this? <laughs> I really didn't want those ripples in the water right now because I wanted the water calm. Never mind. Let's get the exposure a little brighter. If you watch the water down here, there is a bit of glare as it falls off across this way. Now, if we rotate the polarizer, look, it's not affecting the sky, but it is, look, affecting the water down in the bottom right corner of the frame. Let's get that composition right. Let's get the polarizer to work on the water. I'm gonna take one more without the polarizer on at all, just so you get to compare the difference a little bit. I'm gonna to have to adjust the exposure, of course, because the camera, the polarizer, sorry, the polarizer will remove a load of light. So let's take that shot. Is there much difference? Yeah, the polarizer has brought that water glare down just a bit. It's kind of reduced the glare in the distance it's traveling across the water. I very rarely use a polarizing filter because I don't often do sort of hardcore landscape photography and I do try to keep things as natural as possible, but they are a very useful and invaluable tool. If you have one, stick it on the lens and give it a go. See how you get on with it. But it's really important not to get carried away with people online who are always saying, oh, you must have a polarizer if you're going to do landscape photography and you must use these settings and you must have this and you must, must, must. That is utter nonsense. What you need to do is to understand what your settings do and there's only five that you need and then you can create anything by combining them appropriately for the shot you want. Now, a polarizing filter can help. The only way you will ever find out is to get one and use it and see if you like it. But if you don't, that's fine. Don't use it. Bang it on eBay. Get rid of it. I can help you with the five camera controls and I've helped many thousands before you. If you would like to click the link in the top right of your screen now, you can try seven free lessons from my Masterclass in Photography online course. It will cost you about the same as a good quality polarizing filter, but with the advantage that once you have the knowledge, you've got that forever, for life, forever. And it's crucial knowledge that you need if you wish to be a photographer and make photography effortless and easy. Because if you're thinking, what shutter do I need? What aperture do I need? How does the light work? Will this light be better than that light? You haven't got time to be creative. So I hope you found that useful. I'm going to have a wander around here and see if I can take a few more shots with and without a polarizer. I'm going to put them into an album on my clicker snap. There will be a link in the description below this video so you can go and have a look, see what other images that I have got. Also, I use this location quite a bit on my motorcycle, um, photographer's motorcycle tour in this area, as well as in other things, including masterclass. So I'm going to put some images into that album. Go and have a look for yourself and see what you think of it. Meanwhile, I hope you've enjoyed this little video ride out. If you have, please like, share and subscribe to the channel because it makes a huge difference. It helps keep these videos coming. Big thank you, shout out to my sponsors and I wish you well. Until next time.